Hey guys, it's V again. Um, I was gonna do a different next tutorial video, but uh, I got a special request. So this video is going to be about how to care for, and then some some tips on styling, caring for, selecting, taking care of, and detangling and stuff all of your cosplay wigs, and um, any kind of wigs actually. This is good advice for just wigs if you wear a lot of wigs every day. There's lots of people that do. Um, I want to go ahead and say that I did go to cosmetology school. I do know how to do hair professionally. So I am not just pulling this out of some hole in my back end. This is pretty legitimate information. Um, and I have done wigs for local college shows. We've I did wigs for uh, a production of Chicago and I helped create and apply wigs, put on wigs for the whole cast. I have made custom hair pieces before, uh, I make synthetic dreads, so I have a lot of experience. And I also am have been doing um, weaves and hair extensions for a long time too, including making custom clip-in extensions and stuff like that. So I'm pretty familiar with hair that isn't growing out of your head and how it works. And uh, I wanted to like pass that knowledge on because I know there's a lot of people that think they're cosplay wig veterans, they don't have any hair or school background, so I figured maybe I could enhance that with some, you know, some pro, kind of pro tips type stuff. So, um, first thing I'm going to talk about is, um, I want to talk about how you should select a cosplay wig. Um, and I'm going to talk about background of wigs, as, and then we'll move on to the kind of tools that you should be using to care for your wig, and how to, including some demonstrations here, how to care for your wig. Right. Well, first of all, um, things you need to know about wigs. Um, wigs are not usually made of human hair, if we're talking cosplay wigs. They're usually made out of synthetic fibers. It's, it's a little bit like Barbie hair or fishing line, actually. It's, it's basically plastic, long strings of plastic. Um, different kinds, though. And, um, those are going to be the kind of fibers you're going to see a lot, but there are human hair wigs, and their human hair comes in differing grades and qualities according to whether it's fallen hair or, you know, the cuticle is matched, but I don't want to get into all that because this is really more cosplay oriented and you're very rarely going to be using a human hair wig for a cosplay unless you just happen to already have one that's really close to your cosplay. And so I'm going to mostly focus on synthetic. So what you need to know about synthetic hair is that, like I say, it is plastic. It is not made of hair fibers. So it melts, but it does not burn. And it also generally melts when it comes into contact with hot metal. So you should always remember that. And in fact, hot air even will melt your hair pretty badly. Now, the good thing is you can use that to make the hair curl or stand up or lay down. The bad thing is if the heat source is too hot, you're going to melt your wig and that's going to be bad. So don't do that. So just keep that in mind. Excuse me that you don't want to be using like hot metal tools on wigs and you want to always remember that they are synthetic fibers so they're basically plastic. I like to think of it as kind of like Barbie hair. Uh, I think that's the best thing best thing to compare it to. Um, also cosplay wigs generally are not lace front wigs they're generally like just regular open front wigs you can see this one I'm using it doesn't have a lace front. Um, they're usually built up on a netting type base. And what that means is, I'm going to take this wig down, um, what that's going to mean is that your wig is going to be built on, in case you can't see this, I hope you can, uh, it's a netting base. So what you're going to wind up, if you pull the hair away from your wig, you're going to see little pieces of lace and netting. I'm trying to find a good piece here. Here's a piece you can kind of see it. Lace and netting that the wefts are sewn onto, and that's fine. It works great. I actually really love netting-based wigs because you can add a lot of things to them very easily. Um, a lot of wigs will have a scalp closure. This wig actually has a scalp, a synthetic scalp closure, which is going to be basically, it's hard to see it, but it's basically like a little piece of plastic that's skin-colored, and the hair has been rooted into it. I'm going to try to part it so you can see it. You can kind of see it right there. The hair has been rooted into it so that it looks like a real person's scalp. But at the same time, usually that's just the closure that's just going to be back here. 
the front of the wig where you're parting it, a lot of times you're still going to have like netting showing through, which looks very tacky. And I'm going to go over that. So in any case, that's a little bit about wigs. Um, as I'm sure you know, wigs come in all different, like anything you can do with human hair, you can do with a wig. In fact, in my opinion, you can do a lot more with a wig. Um, that's what I like about them. So one thing you're going to want to do when you buy wigs is you should invest money in your wigs and do not buy cheapskate wigs. Um, because really poor quality wigs, one, they fall apart very fast, the fibers fall out, and they get thin and ratty, and two, you're going to notice that um, cheap wigs tend to have a really nasty tendency to not look realistic at all, either in pictures or in when people are talking to you, because the fiber, the way the fiber is made, it does not have a realistic shine. It looks too shiny. It looks like Barbie hair or like fishing line, which is like sparkly, which is not how real, real hair looks. You want it to have, you know, it should be a little bit more dull than that. So this is a pretty uh, reasonable quality wig. Um, I've added highlights to it, but you can see that when you look at this in the light, the fiber is not overly shiny, so it looks pretty realistic. And it's really hard to get a good comparison on fibers when it comes to cosplay wigs, because you're ordering them generally off the internet. But the best thing you want to do is look at the reviews for the wig, look at what people are saying, and try not to trust the photos too much, um, and try not to worry about so much how it's cut as the quality, because you can always cut the wig better, or make it shorter, or fix it but you can't really change the quality of the hair strands and fibers. So worry about things like that. Another thing you want to look at is make sure you're, the wigs you're ordering and buying are reasonably thick. And one thing that I have noticed a lot of wig sellers will do is they will do this. They will take a wig and they will take the hair and they will part it over the back of the, the mannequin that they're using to demo the hair. And then they will, that's really messy. Um, then they will, well, now I have a really good way to show you how to detangle hair, right? Then they will take it and spread it out like this, and it makes it look like it's really full, but it's not. So don't trust pictures too much, you know? Use common sense and look closely at lots of pictures before you decide between wigs. So, um, there's a lot of different places to get wigs. I'm not even going to list websites, because if you want to ask people their best website choices, that's going to be great. I actually ordered this one from somebody on a website called iOffer from a dealer in China called Suzu Cause that sells various cosplay stuff. And I just saw this wig and I thought the color was great. And it didn't have the goofy front. So this is not a complete wig, by the way. This is unfinished. So don't even don't get me started on that. All right, so that's a little bit about selecting a wig and um, stuff. One little side note I want to say is that if you are doing a cosplay wig that is not an unnatural color, like it's, you know, uh, a blonde or a brown or even like some reds and auburns or um, a black wig, a lot of times you're going to actually do well to go visit local stores in your city and check the wig selection there because you may find a great wig that just needs a little bit of a haircut for the same price you would pay for a cosplay wig except instead of being cosplay quality, it's like a legitimate wig quality. So you'll get better quality for the same price, and all it's going to need is a little trim or whatever. Um, and you can go to beauty supply stores for this. Um, I prefer the term hair stores for the kind of beauty supply stores I'm talking about because you're generally going to find more uh, wigs in the kind of stores that sell a lot of weaving supplies and hair extensions. So they're going to be more, a lot of times uh, ethnic stores will carry a lot of that. So that's a good place to go find and get wigs. Um, and you can also call places and ask them if they have wigs. Same thing goes for ponytails, hair pieces, all that stuff. And one great thing about it there is you can actually see the wigs, and a lot of times they'll let you try them on. So you can put them on your head, take a look. And another thing you want to look for in a good wig, um, before I get off the subject, is you want to look and you want to get wigs that are adjustable. And when I say adjustable, that means that they have... It looks like the strap of a bra on the back, or on the inside of the wig cap, and it's going to run usually under the nape of your neck, and it'll have little loops and a hook, and you hook it and change the size of the hooks and the loops. Now I really, in fact, here's a good image of it, I really like 
adjustable wigs and I think they are worth the money. I have adjusted this one really small because I have a tiny head. But um, that's what I'm talking about, the adjustable part. You can also see the wig lace cap and all that stuff is in here really well. So to me this is one of the defining traits of a good wig. If it does not have, if it does not say it is adjustable with straps or an, it is a fully adjustable wig, I would go ahead and say don't even buy it because it's probably not worth your money. So I'm going to put this wig back on the stand really fast. I hope that's okay with you guys. Um, so that's some great information about, you know, like buying and picking your wigs. One thing that will happen to you is um, you'll find once you buy wigs, they're pricey enough. It's nice to be able to keep them and reuse them and recut them or change the style and use them as a different cosplay. I like to do that. Um, for that, you're going to need to know how to store a wig. When you store a wig, one, you want to make sure there's no tangles in it. There's tangles in this one. I'm going to fix that. And two, you're going to make sure that when you store a wig, I personally think the best way to store them is to store them on wig forms. And this is the wig form. It's this plastic or styrofoam head thing. This one is, um, I affectionately named him Derpicard the Dirt Pyre because he, I don't know, he looks like Alucard but derpy. But, um, yeah, get yourself a wig form. They're like $5 at a craft store. You can also get them at Hobby Lobby and places like that, like craft, uh, or not Hobby Lobby, but uh, at hair stores and wig stores for the same price, you know, five bucks, whatever. Store them on your form. It's just so much better. It keeps the wig cap in shape. It keeps it from getting crumpled and folded. And also, it allows the hair to lie in a more natural pattern. Whereas if you're folding it up and putting it in a bag, it's going to get more rumpled and crumpled than it would be. And synthetic hair does tend to take on the shape it's been laying in after a while. So you want to avoid like kinking a straight wig up for a long period of time because you'll get permanent kinks that are kind of difficult to get out. If you cannot afford or do not have the space to store all your wigs on their own wig forms, one thing you can do is you can bag them, which is often the way that wigs are sold to you. Um, if you're going to bag your wig, what you're basically going to do is take the wig off of the form, fold it in half at the part area or across the top, and after this is of course after you have brushed and combed out the wig and got all the tangles out, and then basically just kind of roll the wig or fold the wig on itself, including the hair, minimizing the tangles that is, and then you're going to put it in a big plastic bag and smush out all the air. That's another okay way to store wigs, but I always think that, to me, it's $5 for one of these things, and unless you really have like a million wigs, you should have space to store four, five, ten wigs. I mean, come on, they don't take up that much space. Because you can just set them on your dresser or put them in a closet. I keep mine in a closet, because I have cats. If you look on my other videos, you'll see them. And they think that hair is very entertaining and fun to play with. And they will play with it until it is a dreadlock and cannot be used. So I have to be careful about that. So that's a little stuff on uh, storing a wig. Um, I want to give you some like hints on you know wearing your wig and caring for it. One thing you want to do when you wear your wig is you want to make sure that your wig is pinned to your head and you're not just like letting it sit on your head. I know some people don't realize that. For that, you're going to want bobby pins. I have some right here. Just hair pins, bobby pins, these are hair pins, but hair pins are bobby pins. Get you a whole bunch of them. If you want to, go to Sally's, get a bucket for like, like a big tub of them for like, I don't know, five dollars, and you can get them in any, any color. That's another thing. When you use pins in your wig, um, especially if your wig is a light color, you want to make sure you're using pins that match your hair color. So, this is a, a kind of a gray silver wig. Um, I would want to use either blonde, black, or I actually know you can get silver, so I'm probably going to use silver bobby pins for this one when I use it. But you want to use pins that are going to match your hair so that the pins are not obvious. That's going to look tacky if they are. Um, so be sure to pin your wig on and make sure it's straight. And you can do that by, when you put your wig on, you should put it on in the mirror and... Um, Make sure your part is aligned in the right area. So before you pull anything else around and down, get the part, pull it down back, and then take your hands and pull on this nape netting back here. Pull the nape netting down really good over your head. And 
then pull the side flaps down and make sure they're in the right spot over your ears. Speaking of which, when you wear a wig, um, if you have any length of hair at all, you should secure it down. In fact, I even secure my short hair down. I plaster it down with hairspray and kind of mash it down on my head before I put the wig on, just to keep it from sticking out. But definitely learn some way. You can braid it, and some if you have long hair, you can braid it and like pin it to your head in a swirl. You can also do what I do on girls. It's with girls with really long hair for wigs. It's the crisscross, um, which I'm going to explain in another video. Um, when I have a model with suitably long hair, uh, anything like that, but just make sure you fasten your hair. Don't let it hang down. And also it's good to, uh, invest in and use wig caps, which are those little stretchy caps that come, a lot of times they come with the wig. They go under the wig and they help keep everything all fastened down. So that's on wearing your wig. Also, um, a lot of people don't do this. And I think this is something that helps a lot is... When you're wearing your wig, do not let it get really, really tangled and don't do anything to help. Um, in my opinion, one of the best things you should do is you should keep a big, wide comb with you and throughout the day, periodically, check yourself. And if your wig starts to get really messy, like if you're wearing a long wig, it's going to happen. Just stop, take a break, hold the hair and brush it out, at least at the bottom a little bit, because that way you're not going to come home and have this horrible, crazy dreadlock that's just almost impossible to get out of the wig. You're, you're not going to suffer like that. Also, it's going to look better in pictures because you won't have a tangled, ratty-looking cosplay wig in any of your pictures if you're keeping your, keeping your hair straight. For instance, this wig, I actually, I'm already planning on putting a special pocket inside my coat to hold a wig comb so that I can periodically check my, check my wig and comb it out so that it's not a mess. And that's good too, even not just for looks, but because it is better on the fibers to not get them tangled up as much. And that's something I'm going to always say, like try to minimize tangling at all costs. Don't tangle your wig up if you can help it, you know, keep it untangled. So, um, I want to go over some tools for dealing with wigs. Um, first of all, if you're going to do just for care and maintenance, um, you're going to want to have some different things for combing and detangling your wig. One of the things you're going to want is you're going to want some kind of wide toothed comb. And it doesn't matter what you're using. This here is uh, a, it's called a rake comb. I really like these. They're really wide toothed, obviously. And you can use them to comb wigs out all day long. I think they're great. You can also use this. This is a hair pick. These are all really cheap tools. In fact, a lot of you guys probably have a couple at home. I will advise you that if you have a wig, uh, if you have a tool you're using on a wig, I would say don't use it on your own hair because you want to keep it clean and not get a bunch of product and oil on it because that's going to make your wig funky. And if you use only clean tools, well, the wig's not going to be oily really, so it's going to stay cleaner and you're not going to have buildup getting on your wig. So those are two tools you could use. You could also use like a shower comb more like this. Um, just whatever, whatever you like. Try different things. Get a couple dollar combs and see which ones work best on your wigs. Um, I personally am really fond of the pick and the rake comb, these two things. Um, these, by the way, are available at more uh, at weave stores, hair stores, generally, more than you're going to find them anywhere else. Um, Another thing you can do um, when you're dealing with wigs is you can make what I call the wig comb. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a comb that has really big wide teeth like this one or like a shower comb like this. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a nail file or some sandpaper and there are little seams on the teeth of these kind of combs usually where the plastic was molded. Now these seams are rough and they will snag your wig fibers. And one thing you can do to really help reduce wear and tear is just take your file and gently sand the seams down and smooth them out with the smooth side of the file and just kind of basically bring it to a nice polish and take off all those rough marks. And that's going to help you a lot with avoiding like snagging as you're combing the hair. And it'll also cut way down on the frizz because wigs tend to frizz a lot of times if you're doing a lot of brushing and combing on them. So I would say that's one little thing you can do is make a wig comb. I think that's a great, a great 
pro tip. I don't know. I never thought of that for a long time, and then somebody told me about it, and it was worth the time to do that. I used to use one, but I use this pick now, which doesn't have seams on it at all. It's like a seam. It's made seamless, so I'm good now. Another thing you're going to need is um, you're going to want to have abilities to store and hold your wig while you work on it, because no matter what, you're probably going to have to at least brush it. You're probably going to want to modify it, because nobody wants to wear cosplay wig right off the package. I mean, that's no fun, you know. You want to at least give it your own flair. Um, so what you're going to need for that is you're going to need your, your wig form or mannequin head, whatever you want to call it, like I said, $5 Hobby Lobby. And you're also going to need something to put that on. And now some people, you know, the low-tech solution, if you don't have the money or you really can't think of anything, just like duct tape it to the table so you have a nice hard surface to work on. Now me, I went to cosmetology school, so I already had one of these, and I love them. This thing is called a mannequin stand. You can actually get these pretty cheap from Sally's. It's got a peg. You can tighten it and loosen it, and it lets you put your wig on this little peg, and then you clamp it to your table, and you can put the wig on the peg. And one, you can, as you can see, you can tilt the head around, just like a person's head, so that's kind of handy to be able to tilt that part over to you like that. Or... You can, um, you can turn your head, you know, at different angles as you work, which I, I think is a lifesaver. I think that these are really worth it. You can get a cheap mannequin stand from Sally's for, I think they're under $20. Um, but if you don't have one, use duct tape and duct tape your head to the table when you're styling it. Or some people hold it between their legs. I don't like to do that because I think that's really clumsy and awkward and it just winds up a mess. Another thing, I forgot to go get them, so I'll admit but you're also going to want uh, T-pins or sewing pins to pin your wig to your your form while you're working on it. Um, T-pins are these little pins that are sold at hair stores. Just ask for them. And they're long, sturdy pins. They have a flat top. They're shaped like a T. Kind of obvious. But uh, they're really great because they don't bump the comb or anything while you're using them. And they anchor the wig down really good. When you use T-pins, you just pop a couple like in the part. I like to pop a couple in the bottom kind of area to keep the nape stretched out properly. And that'll keep your wig from sliding as you work, so you won't have any of this like slip and slide situation going on. So that's some other handy things. Um, some people say, you know, you should get a brush for your wig. I don't think there's really any need ever to brush a wig because you can comb it out fine with a big comb. But if you really want to use a brush on your wig for some crazy reason, um, use either a wig brush, which they do sell them at Sally's for probably eight bucks or something. They have like loops instead of bristles. Or use something like this, which is a Denman style brush, which is gonna have these nice rubber nibs. You notice there's no little pin, little bumps on the tips. They're just tapered. That's gonna be the best thing for wigs because it's gonna minimize the catching and the snagging. So if you've gotta use a brush for some reason, use one like this. Please do not use a, a bristle brush or anything like that. It's gonna snag everything. Definitely don't use like a metal brush. Well, that's really rough. Okay, so another thing you're probably gonna wind up needing, this is more like for, uh, you know, for daily keeping your wig in, if you're using it a lot and stuff, keep it in, in repair is you're going to want some kind of product to condition the wig or at least keep it from being tangly. Um, you can use, I actually think that a fabric softener is an excellent pre-convention, pre-convention, I don't know what's wrong with me, uh, an excellent pre-convention spritz to spray on your wig to keep it from being quite so tangled as you walk around. Um, I also have used this, this is leave-in conditioner. This is made by Motions but you could use any kind of leave-in conditioner. I will say you should use a cheap leave-in conditioner because all you're trying to do here is put a little coating on your wig's hair. You're not actually conditioning it. You just want to put a, a grease or a wax coating on the hair so that it slides and it doesn't catch on itself. So that's one thing you can do, something like this. Um, or, if, especially if you use human hair wigs, um, but you can use them on synthetic just very sparingly. You can use this stuff. This is oil sheen. This is actually moisturizer, but oil sheen spray, which comes out in an aerosol mist. Um, smells really delicious. And it has an oil 
aspect to it, usually submerged in alcohol. So you can see that, like when I turn in the light, hopefully you can see the shine on that. It's just, it'll give it a little bit of an oil coating, just a slight oil coating if you don't use a lot. And it'll help the fibers be slippery and not catch on themselves. And if you use a human hair wig for some reason, or a partially human hair wig, you should definitely use a little bit of that once in a while because it keeps the human fibers like smooth and shiny and in condition. So those are just some kind of basic um, things you should own for very basic cosplay wig dealing with them. Um, if you're gonna get a little more advanced and you're gonna be doing more cutting of your wig and styling of your wig, here's some things that I think are great necessities. Is one, you're gonna want a pair of hair cutting shears like this. These are not regular scissors. These are hair cutting shears. They have a tang. They're made to be used to cut hair. Now, you don't need expensive ones. These are $5. They came from Walmart. That's all you need. Just get you some cheap barber shears from Kmart or whatever. No need to spend any more than eight bucks because the thing is, synthetic fibers dull shears really badly anyway, so there's no reason to buy expensive ones when they're just going to get ruined. So I would say use little $5 ones and keep these, to keep these sharp, treat them like sewing scissors and don't use them on anything but your wigs or on human hair or hair extension materials. Don't use them on, you know, plastic and stuff. Also keep a pair of just like regular scissors, um, just on hand. Because there's a lot of stuff you need to cut that you don't want to use those on sometimes. Like when you're, if you're modding a wig, you're going to be probably using thread. You're not going to want to cut thread with your good scissors. If you're cutting through hair wefts for modding, it's better to use this to cut through the weft at the top than, the, than those ones. So that's another idea. And also what you're going to probably wind up wanting if you're doing modding is you're going to want clips to hold parts of your wig out of the way. So these are some different kind of clips that I think are good for cosplay wigs because they don't catch. I don't like those jaw type clips because they have a spring that grabs all this hair and snaggles it up. I think that for cosplay wigs, you're going to wind up using these and enjoying them. These are what's called banana clips. They're very cheap. You can get them anywhere. But they're just little like flat clips that kind of let you pick up a piece of the hair and clip it down flat. I like them because... Um, they don't have anything so much to grab onto the hair with, so you won't have snaggles happening. Also, now these I use because I already had them, but these are uh, color track alligator clips that are made. They have this cool little thing going on like that. I think it's neat. But these are actually professional, like for doing people's hair if you're a hairstylist. But I like them for these wigs because they will grab, as you can see, a whole bunch of hair in one bite. So. And they don't, also, they don't catch very much. They're very good about not being snaggly. You can actually get these from Sally's for reasonably cheap, actually. The color track style alligator clips. But if you're not going to get these, I would go with these and not the, the clutch type, the, the jaw type clips. You're also going to need um, a couple of combs to be doing things with. This is a, a cutting comb, and this is a tail comb. Now say it with me, kids. We style hair with this comb, we cut hair with this comb. And I know this is the hairstylist in me coming out, but this is for styling, this is for cutting. You can style with this, but it's best for cutting. This, styling. This is for parting, picking stuff up. It's awesome. Use your tail comb, or rat tail comb, whatever you want to call it, um, when you're parting the hair because you can just lift it right up, minimal snaggage, you're not going to make a mess with your hair when you're doing that. So, remember, styling, cutting, styling, cutting. Do not use this to cut the hair. It's not effective. Use this if you're going to be cutting your hair and, you know, doing it professionally, style, use this. Um, and also, some other things you might wind up using is, um, these things right here. These are hard to see again, but um, these are crochet hooks. These are what I use to, uh, I use these to add highlights to wigs, but there's a lot of uses for them when it comes to making, modding and making wigs. If you look at this wig, um, I've been highlighting this side of it. It's kind of hard to see, but you can kind of see it, I guess. See the white highlights in there? Those were created with a method on my other tutorial video. I show you how to do it. It's called a hooking method, and it allows you to use loose hair to add 
different colors of hair to a wig that you already own and you can add highlights or lowlights or even just bulk but I just wanted to show you guys that I like that because it makes them look a lot more realistic you don't have that fakey look that you get when it comes right out of the package and all the hair is exactly the same length but again these are crochet hooks um, they're gonna if you're using these you're gonna use tiny ones uh, this is a nine right here